Hey everybody, welcome to Pineapple Knits, a knitting and spinning video cast. I'm Marina, and you can find me everywhere on the web at Pineapple Yarn, especially Instagram where I'm most active. And you can visit my hand-dyed yarn and fiber company at pineappleyarn.com. Thanks so much for joining me again this week. It is a absolutely beautiful day here in South Carolina. It is sunny. I'd say low to mid 60s, so it's just absolutely beautiful fall weather. I really couldn't ask for anything better except for summer, but that's okay. <laughs> for fall, I'm I'm not complaining. But uh, yeah, so I live on the South Carolina coast with my husband and my five children. Life is busy, but it's very good, and we're just getting ready for the holidays, and that's where all of my knitting has been focused on, is gift knitting. I've been very monogamous with my knitting, and so I've had basically a finished object every week, which that is so fulfilling. I can't even tell you. It's been so good. So I'm just going to dive right in and show you my finished object for this week. I showed you the beginnings of these last week on the podcast, and uh, this was a test knit I did for my friend Kay, the crazy sock lady, and I was so honored to be part of her test knit because her designs are, they're just really a joy to knit, and I love her positivity, and she's just oh, such a great influence. I'm so glad that she has shared her talents and her gifts with all of us, but anyway, so this is a test knit. <laughs> And I made these for my daughter. <laughs> this is, the yarn is a Luna Pearl yarns in the colorway Subtropic, which these are totally getting blown out. These are, it's the perfect name for these colors. They're uh, kind of uh, warm neons. I don't even know if I would call them neons. They're just super, super bright and gorgeous. But this pattern is so fun with self-striping yarn because it makes uh, a chevron pattern. It is very intuitive, simple. I mean, just these were so, so quick to knit up. They have this beautiful twisted rib on the cuff and the the top, I don't know what you call this. Maybe that's, I don't know if you call it a cuff. The top. And then also the thumb has the twisted rib as well. And then the palms are just knit straight. So you can see that really neat stripey uh, pattern in there. But I think these would be so fun to knit on you know, just like a really fun variegated yarn as well as self-striping. The, yeah, I I don't think the pattern has a name yet. I will share it when, uh, when it gets a name. Yeah, these were so much fun and I was just had the best time knitting them. Um, my daughter is nine <laughs> and she wanted something to wear when she when bike riding. And, um, you know, it doesn't get terribly, terribly cold here. I mean, cold for me, <laughs> definitely, but um, these will be perfect for her to wear for most of the winter. And I don't even have them blocked yet, and I think they look great. But um, I'll just show you a close up here. So they are knit from the cuff up. So the cuff has this beautiful twisted rib and then into the main pattern. And then a thumb gusset. And then that beautiful twisted rib on top as well. And then the palm is just knit in stock and net. So, you know, I think that these are knit in fingering weight yarn. I think they go faster than a sock, very fast. They fly off my needles because I also made the uh, other finger fingerless knits pattern from Kay and 
they just flew off my needles as well. So I'm not sure if it's just because there's no heel, they're shorter, but if you're looking for a really, really great gift, this is it. These are so fun to knit and so fast. Um, you know, I'm actually going to weigh them really fast because they, I'm positive they didn't use half a skein of yarn. Um, I'm positive. I knit the uh, small to medium size. I always carry scale in my bag <laughs> because I use it all the time. Now this isn't a bag. This is my elephant bag that my fiber share partner from the last round sent me, Ruth. Hi Ruth, if you're watching. <laughs> but I have this little scale in all the time and it's very simple. It's just a kitchen scale, but I'm going to go ahead and see. Okay, so it's telling me 31 grams, which is crazy, 31 grams of yarn for this size. So easily, for most of us, you could probably knit a pair of socks and then with the leftover yarn from a 100 gram skein, knit these up. So great. So anyway, another gift knit done, couldn't be happier and, um, so of course I cast something else on, <laughs> as you do. And now this one, I used a pattern that I have not used before. And a lot of times what I used, to, what I like to do with children's knits is if I find a pattern I like, I will use that pattern several times just with, you know, with a different yarn or if it's a, you know, if it's a DK weight pattern, I will use two fingering weight uh, strands held together. This one is a new to me pattern. It is called Alex and it's a sweater. I'll put, I didn't look at the pattern before I started the podcast. So I'll put all the information below. But the reason I wanted to knit this sweater is because it has a pocket in the front, kind of like a, um, you know, a kangaroo pocket or like the, the pocket that goes across of a sweatshirt, if that makes sense. And this is where I'm at right now. And I am um, going to be doing a fade on this. So I'm gonna be fading in five different colors. I started off by making the 25 inch chest size, which is probably about a size, maybe a children's size six. And I added a strand of mohair to this DK weight yarn. And I think it made my gauge so far off. <laughs> so luckily I measured the sweater, I measured everything, and I just kind of stopped at uh, a smaller size. I'm gonna show you close up. I'm using all my yarn, pineapple yarn, except for this very first color. And this is by Fiber for the People. I will also put the colorway name below. I purchased this from uh, Taylor from Fiber for the People years ago, like when she first started dyeing. So I don't know if she makes this, if she dyes up this color or not. It's a really pretty kind of muted purple. And then the second color, as you can see, and I'm sorry if this is blurry, the mohair is, I think it kind of plays tricks with the camera and the focus. It is so fuzzy. The halo on this is crazy. But the second color is, is very variegated. This is um, Princess Twilight Sparkle. And I actually just knit, I just dyed this up maybe on my last, uh, my last update. And so you can see Oh my goodness, you can see that halo. But this is um, this is an undyed uh, mohair that I'm using paired up with all these. I don't know why I did that. Um, I just thought it would be good. <laughs> just decided to go with it. So you can kind of see how these are all blending up in the back of this sweater. So I did a purple. And then this is the Princess Twilight Sparkle, which is, this is just the way it knits up. It's dyed very, um, I guess, with blocks of color. So that's kind of fun. And then I'm adding in Fortunately Pink, which is a very, very pink 
uh, color, but I think this is going to be really fun, especially this, this section here on top across the chest, I think is really so fun for a kid's sweater. So far the pattern's been really great and I've had no issues with it. I'm afraid the chest is going to be, or the neckline is going to be really wide. So I'll have to come up with something for that, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> this is fortunately pink. This is the next colorway I'm mixing in and it's a very, it has different shades of warm pink. So that will be great. And then this is the color I just finished is Princess Twilight Sparkle. And you can see there's so many different colors in there. That is a really, really fun one. And then this is the color I started off with. And this is uh, Fiber for the People. I can't remember the colorway name. And, ooh, I might be able to see it. Round the Way. I'm sure you love how prepared I am for this podcast. <laughs> okay, so that's those two. And then I'm adding in this one. So I think those are all really, really pretty together. I'm just kind of, I don't really have a set plan on what, what I'm going to do. I love fades so much and I love putting them together and I love experimenting. Um, I, I don't really stress too much about fades because I think that, oh no, I feel like every fade that I put together, even if the yarns aren't perfect, it always looks really good together. And I don't know if I just have pretty low expectations. <laughs> Or if, you know, I kind of just gravitate toward the same kind of color family all the time. I'm not really sure, but generally I'm pretty happy with the way uh, my fades turn out. So, um, some, and I do like to push myself out of my comfort zone. So I think that there are some fades that are absolutely beautiful and are like very very smooth color transitions almost a gradient and then there's some fades that are um maybe kind of larger jumps if that makes sense and i love those fades i like fades that have a little i don't know little uh that aren't just perfect you know i don't know if that makes sense but that is the Alex sweater. I think it will be really great. I'm making that for my six-year-old for Christmas. She really wanted a sweater with a pocket, one pocket. <laughs> so she is going to get it. And I think the mohair will just keep her super toasty warm. I hope she doesn't get too warm in it, but she doesn't like to wear coats. You know how some kids are and so I figured you know a thick sweater with a strand of mohair will just keep her super toasty and we won't have to battle with with the coats so um, yeah I just kind of cast that on really quickly and hopefully it'll turn out cute um, we'll see how the neckline goes it's a uh, you have to pick up and then knit the rib afterward so We'll just see how it goes. But that is all the knitting I'm working on right now. I did work on a spinning project and basically have finished it. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and show you that now. This is my, um, I think my, no, my October, August, September, September. <laughs> my September Hedgehog Fibers Fiber Club subscription. And when I say this is basically finished, I haven't um, soaked it or anything. I literally just skeined this up today, this morning. But I absolutely love this. It is not perfect by any means. It never is because that's kind of how I roll. I really just love to sit down on my wheel and just spin and um, just do it. And 
I just don't really stress about how perfect it is. But I do love some of this barber pulling. Oh my goodness. I'm sure you can tell there's some thick and thin parts. And I'm fine with that. Um, you know, even with the spinning projects that I'm doing nowadays, these are so much better than when I first started. It's really unbelievable. So um, this was a really just such a treat. It's if you remember several podcasts ago, I, I showed you this um, uh, this fiber and it is half silk, half merino. So imagine just it was just so slippery and smooth and um, quite challenging for me to spin. Um, I really had to get into the groove of doing that, just that super slippery fiber. But once I started, it just flew. And um, I'm sure if you have had just the really very, very smooth, slippery fiber, you'll know, I mean, literally, it just flies out of your hands. And so um, that's some of my control issues with this. And then, I mean, honestly, I just, I kind of just let it fly. I just let it draft out of my fingers. And um, I never do a forward draft because I think that it's, a, you, you can get an absolutely perfect effect from that. But um, I really like fast projects. <laughs> So yeah, so part of this is my impatience too, I'm not going to lie. Obviously the main color is turquoise, but there's some really, really beautiful, like right here, this orange, there's pink. This is so, so soft and it has such a beautiful sheen. I'm wondering if that's picking up on camera. I think it's so beautiful. So what will this become? I'm thinking I would like to do another project like this shawl. And this was the Spindrift shawl? No, this is the Spoondrift shawl. Oh my gosh. I'll put it on the screen. I'm having a blank right now. Um, but this was all knit with my hand spun and I love the shawl. It is so nice. And uh, I would love to do another uh, project like that because I'm really amassing a lot of, of uh, hand spun. And so um, it's kind of, it's like time to clear it out, you know? So I don't know. I'm, I'm also kind of playing, uh, you know, playing with the idea of just doing like some last minute uh, gift knits, like some hats, some beanies made out of hand spun. So we'll see. Because most of my hand spun, I should say, this is um, a DK to a worsted weight. And there's other bits that are probably heavier than worsted. But I would say for the most part, that's what I got here. <laughs> so something I think something like that would probably knit up pretty quickly. And that is um, my, I would say right now, that's my spinning weight of choice, definitely. It's... Um, I think it's a really versatile weight. Um, I have been trying to spin that weight uh, because I can use it in multiple, you know, multiple skeins in one project, um, just to give myself a little bit of versatility, I think. And I was really aiming for fingering weight, and once I hit that, I didn't want to lose being able to spin a heavier weight. So that's where I'm at right now, and I am good with it. And I think the barber pulling is really pretty in it too. And that's my favorite, hands down, is barber pulling. That's why I really wanted to learn how to spin, is to get this effect in yarn, because I thought it was so pretty. The first time I really started noticing hand spun. And so, yeah, that was really fun. I know my November subscription will be November or December. I don't know, my next subscription is on its way and then I will have two months that I really um, I really want to spend. And I actually did just sign up for another three months. <laughs> so uh, I just, I love the blends. I've been so happy with the Hedgehog Fiber, uh, Hedgehog Fibers Fiber Club. And so yeah, 
this was a fun project and I'm glad that I was able to finish it. I hadn't been spending that much because I've been focusing on gift projects or gift knits. So that is that. And um, so that's basically what I've been working on. I want to update you on my shop update, which is this Friday. And that will be, let's see, the 22nd of November at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at pineappleyarn.com. And I have a lot of yarn, a lot of colorways, some old friends, some new. And I have a mini skein set. So I am, oh, and I have fiber. Oh my goodness, I dyed fiber and... It is just everything I wanted. I showed uh, a colorway or two last week, I think, on the podcast. I've dyed more. I don't have them packaged up. And I'm looking at all of them right now. Um, I was right in the middle of packaging them up when I started the podcast. So um, I may show you or I may just include them in the newsletter. I'm not sure. But that's what I should add. If you are interested in the... Um, shop update or any of my products or just you know you like to ogle up beautiful yarn and fiber <laughs> you should consider signing up for my newsletter at pineappleyarn.com because uh, yeah it's just gives kind of gives a preview of what's coming up in the next shop update it goes out once every two weeks so uh, not there's it does I don't spam you I don't flood your inbox with email but if you look at my homepage at pineappleyarn.com, on the very, very top, there is a subscribe bar. You just enter your email address and you're all set up. So it's super easy. And so on that note, I am going to give you a preview of what's coming up in the shop update on Friday. Before I do that, I wanted to mention very quickly that my clubs for December are closing in the next couple of days on the 24th. And so if you're interested in any of them, please remember to sign up because uh, they do close uh, slightly earlier this month on the 24th. And that's just to give me enough time to prep them all and send them out uh, during the first full week of December. And I, because it's Thanksgiving here in the United States, uh, things will be a little bit delayed, so I just want to give myself some extra time to make sure they get to you on time. So I'm going to give you a preview of my fiber first, um, just because it's the closest to me. <laughs> and I have it all in this big bin right now. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm going to package it up, I think, in um, some reusable, reclosable bags. I don't think I'm going to braid it <clears throat> because I don't want it to get compressed. So, but the first uh, colorway I want to show you, and I apologize if I showed any of these last week. I don't, I think the only one I showed was Tropical Me, and that will be included in the update. But I have this one, which is so pretty. This is Sunset Beach, and it is really incredibly stunning. I mean, it is so beautiful. I cannot tell you how happy I am with this fiber. I've said before that I think I am my worst critic and this fiber is so beautiful. It is exactly what I wanted in fiber. I wanted it to look beautiful before you spin it. I wanted it to look beautiful after you spin it. And it is stunning fiber, really, really pretty. So if you are a spinner and you like speckled yarn, um, you kind of like just kind of crazy speckly kind of stuff, this is great because this has speckles, tons of different color variations. It is a really fun colorway. And actually, all of my fiber is just going to be a little on the crazy side, <laughs> like my yarn is, I guess. But that is Sunset Beach. My next colorway is called Beach Cabana. It's a new colorway. I will have it on yarn as well as fiber. And this is what it looks like. 
it is a really, really beautiful blend of pinks and blues and greens with speckles. And some of these speckles are just really, really gorgeous. I really hope those, this shows up. They are tiny, very, just so tiny little speckles on there. Just the color variations, it's very pretty. So this is Beach Cabana. And I will have these also on a BFL base. They will look different because the BFL is non-superwash and, <clears throat> excuse me, it's non-superwash and it doesn't have nylon in it either. And um, the ones I'm showing you are a, a superwash merino with nylon. So it's really good for socks. It's really tough. And it also just showcases colors better if you have these bright colors. This one is Flamingo. It is very vibrant, very bright, and it features these really great speckles as well. So this is a really fun one. I have four colorways of fiber this week and hopefully I will be able to get some more dyed up next week. I might as well just show you the colorways on the BFL as well because they're here and why not, right? But it's so funny, you know, how wool is just kind of clumped together as wool, but when you are dyeing the fiber, they are they just all behave so differently. It's very interesting. But in the BFL, this is Beach Cabana, and uh, it's a little more muted because it's not super washed because there's no nylon, but you still are getting some really, just some really beautiful pops of color in this one. I will also have Sunset Beach which is one of my favorite colorways. It's been around forever. And so it's a little messy, but you can get the idea. <laughs> That's sad. It's just, I love this part right here. Oh my goodness. This is very, very pretty. And then I also, like I mentioned, I showed last week, I'll have Tropic Call Me. And that is a really beautiful colorway. Then this one is Flamingo and it has the really pretty dark colored speckles like on my yarn. So it's the same type of colorway. And now I will show you the yarn that I will have. I do want to show you really quickly. Um, I did something kind of fun and um, I took basically my current Christmas colorways or holiday colorways and did kind of a mashup in a mini skein set. And so um, I did just kind of a fun little fade or gradient. And I think that those are just so cute and so fun. And I thought it would be really fun to either pair them with the kind of coordinating holiday colorway or maybe grab like a skein of bubble gum and pair those together. I think that's so fun. So yeah, I just, it was kind of a spur of the moment. Decided to go for it. <laughs> so that, mini skein set will include six minis and which are I guess 20 grams each so that's 120 grams and plenty to do you know if you want to do a pair of striped socks or add it to a larger project so that will be in the shop and I'll probably I love doing things like this so hopefully I'll keep doing things if y'all are interested um, and if you're interested just I would love if you'd leave a comment or email me or 
message me on Instagram. <laughs> um, because I want to make what you are interested in. And so, you know, as much as I, um, I enjoy making all kinds of things. And so if there's something that you're not seeing that you think would be a fun addition to the shop or you're interested in, just let me know. So already I feel like this podcast is just so long <laughs> and I dyed up a lot of yarn this week. So bear with me and I'll just try to roll through these. And, um, if you want more info and specific bases, uh, sign up for my newsletter. So the first one has been requested so much. And so I definitely wanted to, uh, to dye this up, but this is Tropical Me. And it is just such a fun, bright colorway. And I don't, I think this is all getting blown out and you can't even see how many gorgeous colors are in this colorway. This is such a great colorway. This is a really fun one. And so I'll have this um, on several different bases. The next colorway is Waikiki and it is a super variegated kind of a rainbow type yarn and it is um, an all-time classic it's been around for years the next colorway is a new one to the shop it's called sights on summer you can tell I'm already thinking about summer <laughs> and this is a super vibrant it's it, you know on my screen it's not even doing it justice it is uh, super warm orangey pinks, um, you know, straight up kind of like a neon pink and lots of speckles, a lot of speckles. So we'll see if we can see this a little better there. That's a better, that's definitely better color wise. I thought these were super pretty. Then my next one is also a new colorway. This is called Grunge Pop. I did this because I wanted to do, I don't know, wanted to do a couple different colors. <laughs> I think I did, uh, maybe last year I did a sock set that was similar to this. And um, so this again is just totally getting washed out. I don't usually like black or darker the darkest I get is like navy blue, maybe, um, or browns. I'm really not a brown person either, but I decided to add a little bit of black to this and it, I think it's great. So this is a new color. Also, I called it White Hot Secrets because there's no reason. I just called it that. <laughs> this is totally getting blown out, but it is such a fun, speckly colorway. It has all these micro speckles on it, which is a new technique I've been playing with. And it just adds just a beautiful definition to your yarn, to your, uh, to your project, to your knitting. I reserved a skein of this. Um, I dyed a skein of worsted weight. For myself on this base and I'm so excited to knit with it. I'm sure it's going to become like a hat. I also thought it'd be such a cute baby sweater if you had kind of like a tonal or more tonal um, cuffs and uh, like a rib neckline. So cute. So it might become a baby sweater too. I just think that's so so pretty. Anyway moving along this is Flamingo, and if you've been with me for a while, you'll recognize this. This has just been around for a long time. It's a good one. And the bases I'm speaking of, um, with all of these that I'm telling you about, I will have them on my Lonnie sock base, uh, which is a super rush merino nylon, great for socks. I will have it on a Lonnie DK, same blend. It's a super wash merino nylon. I love that DK base because you get more yardage in your 100 grams. And then also because it is so good for, um, it's just very durable with the nylon. So it's really great for like mittens or hats, things that are going to get a lot of wear. Even like my kids' sweaters get a ton of wear. Um, 
the little striped Grayson sweater that I just made for my son. I mean, he is like, like army crawling on the carpet and <laughs> it is, it's already just, it, it has been so well loved so far. So I'm really happy to have that. I love that DK base with the nylon in it. Anyway, I also have it in white tweed. So I'll show you um, with this next colorway. This is a beach cabana, and I showed you this on um, on the fiber. But this is just a really, really pretty colorway for all of my blue and green lovers out there. <laughs> so this is a great one. And my white tweed base is a new base that I couldn't be happier about or happier with. And I really hope that you can see this because this is just such an unusual, interesting base. I love tweed, but I don't like how tweed for my colorways adds a lot of brown and black um, fibers. So it's not just the little naps, I guess, in the yarn. It's also, it darkens my colorways. And so I don't really like that. But I found this white tweed and... It's really gorgeous. So you can see all the white in there. I just can, I can really picture these as a pair of socks. It would be so pretty, or even to add dimension to a shawl. Oh my goodness. So a lot of my colorways this update are going to be on the white tweed. And then um, some of my colorways will be on sparkle and I will let you know the ones that are because I love a good sparkle. I know a lot of you do too. <laughs> I don't know a lot of dyers who are still doing the, the sparkle base or the, you know, the base that has the Stellina in it because um, it requires more care in dyeing and it's really easy to damage the Stellina and so you end up with just kind of a dull yarn, which is too bad. But this is my next colorway. This is Sunset Beach. And it's been around for a while as well. It's so beautiful. Just the, you know, the warm kind of like oranges and pinks and then the really fun pops of speckles. So pretty. I love this colorway. And then um, lastly, I guess I want to show you two holiday colorways that I dyed up last year. And so um, this one is called Melekiliki Maka. And this was my colorway last year um, for the holiday season. And I had a request um, if I was going to dye this up on my Lani sock base and I decided to go for it. Lastly, I dyed up a pretty big batch and I guess this is the only yarn I will have in, in the Gold Nani Twist, the Sparkle Base, uh, this update. But this is a colorway that I dyed for a kit last year and it was my Surfing Santa kit. And it was so much fun. This was, uh, it matched the bags. It was the cutest fabric I had. Um, purchased in Hawaii and so it was really special and let's see so I dyed some of this on my sparkle base and I will have it on all the other bases so um, DK white tweed and Lonnie sock this is Surfing Santa. It's a really great one. So many colors in these. And I was, I had a blast uh, dyeing that because there's just, there's so many colors that go into it. It's really fun. So thank you for your patience. Uh, that is what I will have in the shop this week. And um, I know I'd mentioned about dyeing candles for the shop. And I am going to do that. I just uh, won't have them in this update. So keep an eye out for those. 
And I'm trying to think what else. Oh, I wanted to give you an update on two things I've talked about um, in the podcast before. Uh, the first one is fiber related. It's my circular sock machine. As you may remember, I purchased a um, Erlbacher Gerhardt circular sock machine almost two months ago now. And um, when I purchased it, they told me it would be five weeks and I'm still waiting on it, unfortunately. <laughs> so in case you were wondering, um, that hasn't made it yet. So uh, I guess that will be a Christmas present when it eventually gets here. But uh, the other thing I want to update you is on my garden. So I had been updating you all on my garden the past few months. And I think I may have mentioned this when we had uh, Hurricane Dorian come through here um, a couple of months ago. It actually totally flooded my garden, <laughs> which is really sad. Now, a couple of plants made it, but they're kind of limping along. So I don't know. I go out there periodically to look and yeah, I think it might be done this season. <laughs> Anyway, I just want to update you on those things. Thank you so much for joining me. I just love chatting with you. And if you enjoyed the podcast, I'd love if you could give it a thumbs up or subscribe. And until next time, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.